welcome back to EDH Deck Building. I am your host, Demo, and it's time for another exhilarating episode of Magic Rules You Might Be Getting Wrong. And as I usually do, I'm just going over all the questions that I get asked in the comments of typically my Magic Rules videos, but also a lot of other videos as well that I grab. Let's start out with a real easy one here. I want to know how the syntax of counter all other spells works versus counter target spell. I know it sounds self-explanatory, but what did this mean on the stack? So of course, this was in reference to my video talking about reverse the polarity, which of course says counter all other spells. Well, what is a spell? As I've talked about in my stack video, and I think I also talked about in my zones video, anything that refers to spells is referring to what is on the stack. That's the only place that spells can exist. That's what a counter spell does, right? A counter spell says counter target spell. So that means any spell that is currently on the stack, not to be confused with abilities, which is of course different, has to be an actual spell that is currently being cast. But I guess it doesn't have to be cast in this situation, right? Because copies of spells will work as well. So if I have like three opponents that have all cast spells that are interacting with each other in whatever way, I can cast my reverse the polarity, it will go on the stack on top of all those other ones, right? First in, last out, we always have to remember with the stack, and when it resolves, it will counter all other spells. So whatever else is stacked up on there, all the spells, they're now countered. It gets them all. That includes any copy. So if my opponent has cast a storm effect, or if my opponent has just cast something that copies something else, any copies of spells, they don't necessarily have to be cast, any copies of spells will also get countered by this as well. So as a counter spell it's not great as i've talked about but it is pretty good in those very unique scenarios where your opponents are storming off and copying lots of other stuff buddy at my lgs tried to swindle me and some friends on that last week because it says kettis himself is dealing the damage then lol so this is referring to my video talking about commander damage my short talking about commander damage and what it specifically is which there's so many interactions there that i actually ended up making a video entirely about commander damage because there's actually a lot to cover so you can go check out that video if you're curious more specifically about commander damage but this individual is specifically talking about Kedis Emberclaw Familiar one on a red legendary creature elemental lizard 1-1 one, one. whenever a commander you control deals combat damage to an opponent it deals that much damage to each other opponent so of course this can be your partner in the command zone but it could also be in the 99 of your deck if it works really well that way and the wording of course is very important here whenever a commander you control deals combat damage to an opponent so of course combat damage damage is what you want for commander damage, right? What this person's saying is, oh, well, this guy in my playgroup said this counts towards commander damage. And of course, the part where your commander is dealing combat damage to an opponent, that is commander damage. That is the literal definition. However, it deals that much damage to each other opponent. And as I talked about in my commander damage video, I use the Gearson Starn example there of Gearson Starn dealing damage during combat because you had another creature deal one damage to an opponent, even though it's being dealt during combat combat, that's not actually combat damage. The same is true for Kedis, right? It's literally the exact same example. And even though it is that creature, right? It says it deals that much damage to each other opponent. It is that creature dealing the damage, but it is this effect that is doing it. It is not actually combat damage. So that will not count towards commander damage. However, it will count towards damage triggers. That's what I did in the Malcolm and Kedis deck that I originally made way back in the day on my channel. When Whenever one or more pirates you control deal damage to your opponents, you create a treasure token. This actually does work because it does not reference combat damage. So I get in with my Malcolm, it's going to deal damage to my opponent, my Kedis triggers, which then has my Malcolm dealing the damage to each other opponent, not commander damage, but it is going to get the trigger from my Malcolm because of course my Malcolm is a pirate and it's going to create me a treasure for each opponent I have. So that does work but it is not commander damage. In a Rakdos deck, could Hecatomb, Urborg, and Torbrand make all your mountains ping for three damage instead? The mountains are also swamps. They still count as either red or black. In the ping effect, they are red or black damage source. Would this work? It would not. And of course, the reason why is because your mountains and swamps are not a red and black source. Unless, of course, you have a Painter Servant in play. That'll work. If I put a Painter Servant in play, make all my stuff red, so my lands will be red, and the Torbrand situation will work. Of course, Hecatomb is turning all your swamps essentially into pingers, and Torbrand says if a red source you control will deal damage to opponent or permanent opponent controls deals that much damage plus two instead. The problem is your mountains, which are now swamps, yes, they are not 
going to be a red source. They're colorless. All lands are colorless. Again, unless you have that painter servant in play, the color identity is red. Yes, that is important to note, especially for the commander format, of course. In your commander deck, a mountain is a color identity red card. A swamp is a black color identity card, but they're not actually black and red. When they're sitting on the battlefield, they are colorless. All lands are colorless. Unless, of course, I have the painter servant in play, which turns all permanents into that specific color. That will work. So if you want to do this scenario, Hecatomb, Urborg, Torbrand, I got to have that painter servant in there as well to make all of my lands into red sources so that they work with the Torbrand. I made the Minion Carl deck based on the first video, similarity to how you initially did. Lots of hoops, like you said, and dealing two damage for discarding a land really isn't that great. Question, can you use this ability after damage, but before damage is taken, i.e. trade creatures, but then use the ability to put it into the deck? So of course, they're talking about my Minion and Carl deck or Borborygmos and Fibblethip. And they're talking about that ability where I can tuck my commander into my library third from the top. That's the way I built that deck. I built it around that ability. I think it's a really neat ability. And what they want is I attack with my creature. I connect with my opponent's blocking creature. And then in response to the damage, I tuck my commander into my library. No, sorry, you cannot do that. Can't do it anymore. You actually could for a brief time. They actually had a point in Magic's history, for those who aren't aware, where you could have a attacking creature put the damage on the stack. I think the stack actually was used in combat damage and then sacrifice the creature in response. So creatures like Mog Fanatic and Sakura Tribe Elder became insanely good because you could actually block with them, put the damage on the stack. So deal the one damage and then still sacrifice them in response. That was a terrible rule. You can't do that anymore. So no, this does not work. You have to either have your Borbergos and Fivlethip deal the damage to that blocking creature or stick it into your library. One or the other, not both. I'm fairly certain I personally know what interactions are here, but I think it would be important to go over what exactly happens when the legend rule applies. Whether or not it's sacrifice, death triggers, etc. I mention this because I have a deck where I'm constantly cloning a legendary creature and having those clones die, so I often have to explain what's happening. So, what happens? I create a token copy. Let's say we're doing that, right? I create a token copy of my commander and the token enters the battlefield, any enter the battlefield effect you will actually get. So if my commander has an ETB, I cast my cackling counterpart, I'll get that ETB. However, that happens after, right? The legend rule is a state-based effect, which means it happens immediately as soon as anyone has priority. And funny enough, I had a guy mention in another video, actually the state-based effects are checked whenever the stack is completely clear. Oh boy. Yeah, that is definitely not the way magic is played. It would be a much, much different game if that was the case. The stack does not have to be empty in order for state-based effects to happen. You only have to check if anyone has priority, which of course happens pretty much every single second of every game. So immediately, as soon as anyone has the opportunity to do anything, state-based effects are checked and the legend rule is one of those, just like a creature having zero toughness is one of those, right? That is a state-based effect where that creature will immediately go to the graveyard. And funny enough, that's similar to the legend rule where that creature is dying. Yes, that creature is absolutely dying. That's why if I have a creature with a dies trigger and I create a token copy of it, the legend rule says I have to put that creature into the grave graveyard and it is dying because dies means battlefield to graveyard. So any dies effect I have on my commander will work. That's why any dies trigger on a commander that is in blue, a great way to get that dies trigger is just by creating that token copy with like a cackling counterpart. You're going to get the dies trigger. However, it is not sacrificing. That is also important to note. You are not actually sacrificing that creature. Again, just like with a creature who has a zero toughness, that creature is not getting sacrificed. It's just being put directly into the graveyard from the battlefield. So you will not get any sacrifice triggers. If I have a Mayhem Devil in play, for example, I'm not actually sacrificing my commander, but it is dying. That is the important distinction there. On my last Magic Rules video talking about removing creatures from combat, I had a guy say, you can prevent creatures already attacking with a card like Maze of If, though. And it's funny how many people mentioned Maze of If in the comments of that video when I talked about If High Arcanus in that video, which is doing literally the same thing. And if you look at the names of these cards, you could probably figure out why they are doing the exact same thing. Yes, Maze of If does exactly the same as If High Arcanus, which is is why you are not preventing the creatures from attacking. It does the exact same as I talked about in that video. It does not prevent it from attacking. It does not stop it from attacking. A maze of if used on an attacking creature 
does not prevent it from attacking. It only stops it from dealing damage. That is why that card is in my Questing Beast deck. It works perfectly in that deck because it says, untap target attacking creature, prevent all combat damage. That would be dealt to and dealt by that creature this turn. And of course, my Questing Beast says damage cannot be prevented. So I use this on my own creatures in that deck and the damage that is being dealt to my creature is prevented, but the damage my creatures are dealing cannot be prevented. So that's why it works so good there. It's like a one-sided fog in that deck. So no, it untaps the attacking creature and prevents the damage, but it does not remove it from combat and it does not make it not an attacking creature anymore. It's still an attacking creature. I had a whole bunch of comments in that video as well about goading in regards to a propaganda effect and people saying, okay, well, what if I have to attack a guy and that guy's got a propaganda? I gotta pay the two? No, again, you gotta read the wording here. On those gold cards, it says attack if able and as I've pointed out in a couple of videos recently, can't is going to beat everything else, right? Can't always wins whenever you're coming into these conflicting rules interactions. Propaganda says creatures can't attack you unless their controller pays too. So that means creatures can't attack. That's it. And Goaded says attack if able. So if my only option is a guy who's got a propaganda in play, I can just choose not to pay, right? Cards can't force you to pay. Any card like a smothering tithe, study cannot force you to pay that mana. You always have the option. And of course, a propaganda is saying you cannot attack unless you pay the two. So you can just choose not to pay the two. That means the goad does nothing. The goad is now turned off. So goad does literal nothing if everyone's got a propaganda or a ghostly prison in play. And we're going to end off with a really interesting interaction here again regarding the last magic rules video I did. Question, I have a Zedru, the great hearted deck, and I gift someone nine lives and then I die, do they lose the game as well? So this is in reference to what I talked about with the Tesa interaction where you get in for lethal damage, your opponent is now gonna be reduced to zero. Again, getting back to those whole state-based effects thing, your commander says, if my opponent deals damage with a creature, those creatures are gonna get destroyed, but those do not trigger and go on the stack because you're already dead. Getting to zero life is a state-based effect and it will check as soon as someone has priority. So before your triggers even go on the stack from your Tesa, you're dead. So your opponent that attacked you with all those creatures, their creatures will survive. Now let's take this same mentality and apply it here to this situation. So I have a nine lives in play, which says if a source would deal damage to you, prevent that damage and put an incarnation counter on it. When there are nine or more incarnation counters on it, you exile it. But most importantly, when it leaves the battlefield, you lose the game. And I'm going to donate this to my opponent with my Zedru. So now they control it. Now getting back to that same interaction, I've now died. And of course, when I die, none of my triggers go on the stack, but that's not triggers I own, that's triggers I control. Again, the distinction between own and control is very, very important. But the other important interaction here, of course, is that when you die in a commander game, you're taking all your other cards with you. My opponent has gained control of one of my creatures. They don't get to keep it once I'm out of the game. That creature vanishes and ceases to exist. So let's play through this scenario. My opponent has my nine lives in play. Now I've been reduced reduced to zero life. And as a state-based effect, I am being removed from the game. I'm no longer in the game. So my nine lives is also getting removed from the game. It is leaving the battlefield though. Now I talked about this with the oblivion ring effect where I can oblivion ring my opponent's thing. And when I die, that leave the battlefield trigger says, okay, well they get their thing back. The only problem is I'm now dead. So I don't get any triggers on the stack. My opponent that has the nine lives though, they're not dead. They're still in the game game, right? So that's a enchantment they control, even though I own it. So when I die, I will leave the game. My nine lives will leave the game, but they currently control it. And it says when it leaves the battlefield, you lose the game. And you in this situation is the person that controls it. So this will trigger because they're still in the game. The ability will go on the stack. And when it resolves, they will lose the game. So yes, you will take them with you when you go. So this is a great way to, you know, sort of play politics. If you're in your Z deck and make sure that opponent keeps you alive because as soon as you die they're going with you pretty neat interaction there i hope that helps answer your guys's questions again i love doing these videos answering all these interesting questions i hope i'm getting it correct i think that i am let me know if i got anything wrong and also let me know in the comments below if you have any other burning questions about interactions in the game of magic that is it for today though and thanks for tuning in